In this tutorial, we are going to look at Navigation 2D in combination with a Tile Map, a tool that you can use to find the path between two points and find the shortest path as well. So this allows you to make characters walk and avoid obstacles automatically for you. We are going to talk about how to make it work with a Tile Map and about the system's limitation. Now this is a collaboration with Chris Bradfield from Kids Can Code. You can go to his channel to watch the second part where he'll show you how to work with isometric maps and hex-based maps and how to avoid the most common issues you can have creating navigation polygons. You can find the start project on our GitHub repository, Kickstarter Quest 3. You can get the January 19 navigation to the entire map copy the path to the start folder and then when you open Godot, import that folder to get to the same starting point. It has the character, the map we are going to navigate and the node tree prepared for you. So first let's look at the node tree. We have a simple node demo to start the game to initialize some code. Then we have a navigation 2D node and a tile map as a child of it. So navigation 2D is the node that finds paths between points and it does that using a polygon, using a collision mesh. And the tile map is going to provide that mesh. We're going to look at that in a moment. But if you want to create new navigation 2D node, you press Control A and you search for navigation 2D. You can find it here. Now you can manually create the polygon the character will navigate using a navigation polygon instance. But you can also create that navigation data inside of your tile set, the element that you use to draw the map as I've drawn on screen. Then the character is a sprite and we have a line 2D node to draw the line visually on the screen to draw the path the character will walk. So let's open the assets folder tile sets and double click on grasslands.tres. This will open the new tile set editor in Godot 3.1. Going to expand it using the button at the bottom right of the bottom docker and click on grasslands to open the tile set. You can press alt anytime to toggle the name of the tiles which makes it easier to spot them. We need for each of the tiles that we create, so for example I'm going to get the grass tile in the top left to go to the navigation section of the editor and then you will see that I have a polygon that I've created. So I'm going to delete the polygon on the grass by clicking the trash bin icon and create a new one. To do that you left click the polygon icon and you click to add new points and you want to click on the starting point to close the shape and create the polygon. Now on tile sets it's very important that these polygons take the entire tile or that these snap perfectly, that the paths connect perfectly between tiles. If you were to create a bridge with some gap inside the tile, you absolutely want the bridge to be connected to some edge of the tile, the top and bottom or the left and right edges. But we're going to create polygons that take the entire tile and to do that we're going to use snapping. So click on the grid snap icon and we're going to set up the grid so that we can easily create our polygon. So these tiles, this tile map, uses 80 pixels by 80 pixels sized cells. So I'm going to go to the inspector and expand the snap options. You can see that the step is 32 by 32 pixels. We want 80 by 80. So now the snapping grid will align with my tiles. And so I can click to create a new polygon, make sure that snapping is on, so this is the blue icon here. I'm going to click on all four corners of my tile. So left click, left click, left click, you should see the points appear and I finish by clicking the top left vertex and this closes the shape. Doing this means that the character can walk on the entire cell, can go through it and there are other cells which don't have a navigation polygon. This one, the plant, the character cannot go through it. Now the tricky part about that is at the moment you have to go through each and every tile and add the data to it. 
manually. So you have to create a navigation polygon on each tile in your tile set, which can be a little cumbersome. But this allows the navigation 2D to find the path between two elements. So with that done, you save, control S, and I'm going to fold the tile set editor by clicking on the bottom panel. We can now get started with the code. And I went ahead and create two GD script files that have attached to the demo node and the character node to save us a tiny bit of time. We're going to work on demo first because it's the one that will request the path to navigation 2D. So let's click on the script icon next to it and I'll expand the script editor with control shift F11. The top three lines of code access the three nodes that we want to use in that script. So navigation 2D, line 2D, that's what I'm going to use to draw to the screen, and the character that we're going to give the path we asked to nav2D to. We are using the unhandled input method to listen to the player's input. So we're going to check when we left click somewhere and ask a path to where we clicked to nav2D. An handled input is just like the input method that you've seen if you went through the getting started guide in Godot. The difference is it's often recommended to use that one for the player input because Godot will first call input and then it will forward the input events to the user interface and you only want the player to move if the input is not interrupted by the interface. So uh, you want to use unhandled input to get that. Now, we are going to check if the player pressed the left mouse button. The way I like to do that is to do it subtractively. So if the player did not click the mouse button, I'm going to return from the function. Let me show you how this works. So I'm going to use a negative condition. If not event is input mouse button. I'm going to return from the function. This is a very common way to work in Python and you put that at the top of the method. This helps to uh, say if a certain condition is not met, we don't want to run that function. Now we have to check that this event is the left click and that we're clicking down. It's the very moment we are pressing the button. So we're going to do it the same way negatively. If the event button index is not mouse left or button left, this is a constant provided by Godot. Or if the event is not pressed, we return as well. And if we go past these two conditions here, it means that we left clicked on the canvas somewhere. So we have an input event mouse button. An input event mouse button gives you access to, we have to go back up to input event mouse here, to position and global position, the place where the player clicked. So we're going to get our path from that. We're going to store it in a new variable, call it new path. And I'm going to use type hints here. That's what colon equal does. It tells Godot, please assign type, static type to this variable based on what I put after the equal sign. We're going to ask nav2d for the path and navigation2d has a get simple path method that we can ask here. So the starting point is going to be the character's position or the character's global position. I recommend using global position in those cases because if you move the character under different nodes and they start at a different position than the level's origin, then the code will not work anymore. But with global position, it will. The end point is the event's global position and that's all we need. This is going to give us a path and the path will have the type pull vector to array. Now we want to do two things. First, we're going to get our line 2D and line 2D takes some points, uh, which is a pull vector to array as well. We're going to assign it the new path. And finally, we're going to do something similar to the character. We're going to create, or we have a path variable that I've created for us, path property, and we're going to assign it the new path. And this is all that the input code will do. Then it's up to the character to move along that path.
All right, so now let me go back to the scene tree, control shift F11 and open the character script because we need to handle the movement along the path on the character. There again, there is some template code to get us started. The character will have a movement speed and that path property that we used in the demo script, it's of type pull vector to array because this is what the path will be. An array of vector to an array of positions if you want and it's using a setter a method called set path and we are going to use it to set up our path we want to do two things we're going to use the process method that gets run on every frame to move the character along the path but at the start because there is no path to move along we set process to false and when we update the path, we want to set it back to true so that the method runs and the character will move along the path. And we'll use the move along path method to do that. So let's start at the bottom with set path. We're going to do a little check first. We want to be sure that the value that we get, so the, the path that we get, is always a path that has some places where the character should go. So if value size, remember it's like an array that path, so it has a size method that returns the number of points on the path. If it's equal to zero, which it is at the start of the, the game, right? We want to return from that function. We will, however, assign the value to the path variable. You always want to do that in a setter method. And then if the size is not equal to zero, we are going to set process to true. So the reason we have this condition is because setter methods get called at the very start of the game before the nodes get added to the scene tree. When you initialize the class, if you want, if you, when you create an instance, all the setters get called. They also get called when from demo you say, character.path equals new path, Godot will actually call that setter. It will not directly assign the value to the path. It will call set path with the value that we pass. And this allows us to set process to true when we update the path, if there is a new path. Now, in the process method, it's going to be fairly simple. We're going to calculate the distance the character should move this frame. Let's create a new move distance variable and we're going to use the type hint again, and uh, we're going to multiply speed times delta. So the character moves 400 pixels per second. We have the data value to represent the seconds, the time between the last frame and this one. This is the move distance. And then we move that distance along the path. So we pass move distance to the move along path method. And with that, we're going to focus on the biggest method in this tutorial, move along path. So this one is going to be a little trickier because we have to go through all the points in our path array, one after the other, and move the character towards that point. So we're going to start by storing the character's current position, its previous position if you want. So it's going to be the last point or the starting point. And we're going to assign the character's position to that. Then we are going to loop over our path. So for i or index in, and we're going to use the range method to create a list of indices and pass it the path size. So we're going to loop through all of the points in the array. And the first thing we are going to do is calculate the distance to the next point. So distance to the next point, it's going to be equal to the starting point dot distance to so starting point is a vector to so it has this distance to method which we can use to get the distance to the first point in the path move along path takes a distance this is the distance that the character will walk so we want to check if the distance is lower than the distance from the character's position to the next point on the path we're going to move as far as we can along the line that connects the two points, the start and the end. So if distance is lower or equal to distance to next, and we want to make sure that there is some distance left to walk, you'll see why in a moment. So if it's greater than, than zero, 
we're going to change the character's position. So position is going to equal starting point dot we're going to use linear interpolate and linear interpolate from vector two allows us to find a position between two vectors, two positions very conveniently. So we give it the point we want to go to. In this case, this is path zero. So the first point in the path array and the ratio is going to be distance divided by distance to the next point. And this is going to give us the position the character has to move to. And if we meet that condition, we break out of the loop. We don't want to move any further. We stop there. Now, if that distance variable is greater than the distance to the next point, the character will move past that point. And sometimes in the path, the points can be very close. So the character might move past one or two points in one frame. So then if you don't meet that condition, you want to uh, subtract the distance to the next point. Then we're going to update the starting point. We're going to set it to the next point in the path. And we're going to remove that from the path. Path.remove index zero. And this will allow us to move past points, to move one, two, three points on the path based on the distance the character has to walk this frame. And finally, we want to make sure that when we have reached the distance the character should walk, we're going to break from the loop. So if the distance is lower than zero, we're going to assign the next point to the character's position, set process to false, and break from the loop. And with that, you can try the game, click anywhere, and the character will move to the place you click on the map. Thank you kindly for watching. I invite you to check the second part in the video description. You should have a link at the top to Chris's part because uh, he's going to show you how to work with isometric tile maps and hex tile maps. That said, be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.